Snoop Dogg has a new album, Bush. And a very sexy bit of PR is, of course, that uh, the mighty Pharrell, he co-wrote... Did he write, co-wrote all the songs? He produced the whole album. Produced the whole album? Yes, sir. Wow. Now, is it true that Pharrell, he was the one encouraging you to be a bit more family-friendly, a bit more mainstream with Yeah, it? yeah, he made me change certain words. I had a song called So Many Holes, he made it So Many Pros. <laughs> Just well, that certainly toned it down. <laughs> <laughs> Aren't pros just prostitutes? No, they're professionals. Oh, I see. <laughs> <laughs> Silly me. <laughs> <laughs> the ladies in the video still look quite like hoes. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> they're professional. <laughs> <laughs> they're in a video. <laughs> and then, Pharrell, is it true that he... I mean, I'm sure he enjoyed working with you, but he did have some difficulties working with you as well. Yeah, when we were um, working on a particular song called California Roll, um, Stevie Wonder had came up to the studio and Pharrell had called a second-hand contact from being in the studio with me, and he kind of froze. He didn't know how to produce it anymore. He was stuck. He was like... You might, have, you might have to explain what the... Yes, so uh, Pharrell was in an environment created by Snoop. <laughs> <laughs> Pharrell was no longer the same Pharrell. Is that what you're saying? Yes. Yes. He was, he was now someone else. <laughs> he, he, was not, he was not the greatest producer speak. in the world. He, he wasn't was, the greatest producer in the world. He was just speak. a guy in the room. <laughs> <laughs> so was Stevie Wonder trying to talk to him? Stevie Wonder was in the mic booth, and you know Stevie can't see, so Stevie was waiting on some direction. <laughs> And Pharrell wasn't giving him no direction, so Stevie was just in there, just... <laughs> I'm like, well, 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 Stevie, Pharrell said, can you sing this part? And then Pharrell said, can you play the harmonica? So I had to basically take over, because Pharrell was stuck off of space cookies. He was in another place. <laughs> 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 and was Pharrell happy with his work on that, on that track? He was happy a couple of days after. <laughs> <laughs> and then you did go to one of those clubs. You went to the ping-pong clubs. We did, yes. Uh, we did um, in our spare time. Uh, but we also <laughs> shot stills there. And I had a very unfortunate experience uh, with the ping-pong ball. What happened? Uh, um, uh, I was trying to be, a, you know, a showboat. Mm -hmm. And I opened up my mouth to pretend to catch the ball. <laughs> And, and she called my bluff. <laughs> the, it was see, amazing. I'm totally confused. <laughs> uh, okay, so... You thought the MTV story was <laughs> bad. Right this one. <laughs> so, 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 yeah, part... off you go, Bradley. <laughs> <laughs> you, you tell us what the nice lady did. <laughs> <laughs> um, so you can pay to watch women eject um, various uh, objects out of their uh, 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 vaginal cavity. Is that proper? She <laughs> played a nurse on yeah. ER? She knows what you're that talking about. Yeah. 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 So, so uh, uh, like darts, so sexy. darts, uh, <laughs> ping pong balls, um, uh, sort of kites. And stuff. <laughs> <laughs> ribbons to kites. Kites? Yeah, like kite, ribbon kite. Ribbons in the end of kites. No, there would be, if, they, if the kites had flown out of there, we'd have been, you know, would have been in the movie. <laughs> so, and the precision with which she could do it is incredible. This one very talented young woman. And, um, <laughs> and so we were all sitting there, and the monkey, Chow, myself, and Stu. And I was like, <laughs> and this would be a good one, Todd. Get this one. Wouldn't and it she, be funny yeah. if. And she was just like, boom! <laughs> <laughs> and I was sick again. <laughs> a lot of glamour, of, you know, Sex in the City, New York. Da, da. David doesn't. Uh, <laughs> you're, you're bizarre. I mean, maybe on paper it sounds worse than it is, but is it true you still live in an ex-council flat? Uh, yes, yeah. Huh. yeah. Well, you must be making quite a lot of money, and... Gordon has made the houses nice and cheap. Well, yes, and that's, you know, and I... And, but the thing is, I, I live in a flat I bought six or seven years ago that is fine, but except it's much more unpleasant than it was when I moved in, obviously, because I've been living there. <laughs> uh, but um, but I, I sort of... The prospect of... The last time I moved was, I think, the most stressful day of my life ever. And I, the prospect of moving in is terrifying. Now houses are getting cheaper and cheaper. I've got another excuse not to move. And I actually, I hate the fact that I have to take pride in where I live. 
I, I, hey, it's all on the television the whole time. Everyone's like, oh, I, you know, I couldn't stand this living room. I'd have to change that. I'd have to change. Why do you have to change all these? All you need is a roof, heating, a TV, and a fridge, and you're sorted. <laughs> now, what sort of shithole do you live in? <laughs> It's not that. It's, you know, it's, it's perfectly functional. Is there sawdust on the floor? <laughs> no, there's carpet on the floor. It's fine. But, but, the, but the thing is, you, everyone's got to give such a massive shit about their <laughs> domicile. Why? Because it's a nice thing to surround yourself well, with. Yeah, but nice... fine, if that's, if that's your hobby, fine. But why is there so much pressure on me to be bothered to move and tidy up and paint the place and worry about that bit over the cooker that's melting? <laughs> You see, there's a, there are a lot of other slovenly people out there. <laughs> and when we get round to it, we will speak. <laughs> <laughs> is, uh, you've got to go in the celebrity version of how clean is your house. Are Kim and Aggie going to come round and just kind of go, oh, my God. <laughs> why, you wouldn't let them yeah, in. I mean, why would I permit that? Why does <laughs> anyone permit that? I say, why does anyone permit that? Yeah. Apart from they do clean your house. <laughs> <laughs> For free. I have to say, I have never felt my house is so dirty <laughs> that I wouldn't mind public humiliation. <laughs> I mean, just either do it yourself or pay someone. Just say, no, I want it for free and I don't mind the whole country thinking I'm a slob. <laughs> you could do a cartwheel, I reckon. Yeah. Uh, yeah. It's no good cheering. You could do it. You could do it. How could I... Well, I'm six foot seven. How am I going to do a cartwheel with it? I You're all you in proportion. A... You're not all in proportion. <laughs> You should know about me. <laughs> 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 I, do a Why? I bet you could do one off of here. Definitely. On that what? Don't keep oh, pushing me into Justina, it. Justina, Richie, and Graham Norton would like you to do a cartwheel. <laughs> Why don't you do a cartwheel? I think the ladies and gentlemen but would I like that. <laughs> Why would I do a car with a pick up a gun? I'd just pick up a gun. I wouldn't. No. No, 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 no. No, you wouldn't. Because they're firing at you, right? Yep. And you can't run because they're shooting head height. You go, oh, I know. I'll do a cartwheel, let them shoot my legs, less important than the head, yeah. right? Pick the gun up, crumble because they've shot my legs. <laughs> right? And then you shoot them. Problem straight away. Go on. Mid cartwheel, yeah. they're shooting at me. Yeah. Glasses come off. <laughs> Shooting at you. Have a cartwheel without your glasses on. I can't, I don't know how to do a cartwheel. I'll, I'll, give, a cartwheel. It, I'll give a thousand pounds to charity if you do a cartwheel. <laughs> Why has it got to be the charity? <laughs> <laughs> In the air. Just gonna throw your legs over your head. Just got through your head to your legs. They will go and see Cemetery Junction tomorrow if you do that cartwheel. I die. This is. Oh, oh shut up! Oh, oh see. Imagine that. Imagine that. Whirling oh, through yeah. the air. It's It'll be brilliant. It'll be like the Millennium Wheel. Oh. <laughs> this is going to be brilliant. Yeah. I should have ironed more than the front of my shirt. <laughs> I love swaying. I don't know. Now I how think to do a you're probably safer to do it behind the oh, sofa. But I've you never been there. They're like, yes. <laughs> yeah, behind the sofa. Oh. Okay, here we go. Oh. Oh. How, do you, how do you do a cartwheel, Graham? Oh. Um, you do you know how? To, so just put your arms up. Okay, thank you. Be so careful. <laughs> No, it's a cartwheel, it's straight ahead, isn't no. it? No! Yeah, the... That's a front... No, no, it's sideways, isn't it? <laughs> sideways? Yeah, in one hand. King of gym. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay. How am I going to get my legs up in that far? You kick them really Look. hard. No, no, I don't mean... I don't no, want to hit something. I can't... Oh, me? Momentum's your friend. Yeah. Really, Why really is it with a banana on the floor? <laughs> well, I thought I was supposed to be picking up a gun. <laughs> Run before you can walk. <laughs> <laughs> you, need, you need a bit of momentum. So you go back there, right? And then look. So look. So you're going to run up here, right? You're going to put your hand there, 
and you're going to... Your legs are going to go up, it's going to be amazing. They're going to go... We're going to slow it down. <laughs> you'll do that and you're going to go... I think it's possible. <laughs> it is, you you made it. me believe. It is possible. OK. It's going to be amazing. OK, here we go, here we go, here we go. OK, so, wait, wait, wait. wait. So, that, this hand... So, Christina, is it that hand on the ground? That hand on the ground? Yes. That hand on the ground. Oh, and then kick so that leg for all your work. Yes, for oh. all your work. Okay. Oh. <laughs> <You're good. laughs> okay. Damon, I you, know you and Matt Damon. Very I exciting. know, lucky me. Yes, uh, it's the the two of you. He plays a, a he plays a, a congressman, woman. and I play a contemporary ballet dancer. Do you? Yes. yes. <laughs> it's a match made in heaven. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And you were doing lots of exterior filming. Oh yeah, which is what? actually a problem when you're shooting with someone like him because he's vastly famous, mm. and wherever he goes, people are like. Like they literally, I feel like their brains melt. You know, when you look at someone's face and you realise their brains just melted when they see it. And we were having to do, we had this awful day, we were having to shoot a very emotional scene. Lots of crying and, you know, begging with each other, where we're outside at a very public place and there are about 350 people crowded around watching us do this emotional scene. That's mortifying. I mean, it's difficult. really, really hard. Mm. And so Matt was just managing to squeeze a tear out when someone from the crowd went, Matt Damon. <laughs> <laughs> Loved you in Chaplin. Oh, thank you. And it got us thinking about the silent movie era. Do mm. see. Uh, you know, the silent movies with the, the music, the speech cards, the comedy, custard pies, all of that. And it struck us. Surely the hardest thing of all to do in the silent movie era would have been to have a talk show, OK? It'd be very hard to do, wouldn't it? Wouldn't it, madam? See, now you're, now you're agreeing. Yes. <laughs> so, we thought we'd give it a go. So, uh, we've got a silent movie effect and music. <laughs> so, you understand what's going on, yes? You're following us. OK. So. Uh, what we're going to do is we're just, we're just going to mime and the speech cards uh, will do the work for us. Are you following this? Can this technically be considered a now acting with Robert Downey Jr.? Can we...? <laughs> yes, you can. Yes. 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 <laughs> yes. <laughs> what degree from Kevin Bacon are you, then? <laughs> I can know where I am in the game now. <laughs> just, just don't drop the ball. <laughs> <laughs> so, I'm, I'm so, okay, I'm fine. <laughs> okay. Here we go.
<laughs> it's the joke of the season. Uh, I, oh, well done, ever. Let I, me lay this down on my feet. <laughs> <laughs> Your designer shoes. Thank you. <laughs> now, do we, do, we, do we... Oh, we've got other things here. Let, let, you know... Let's help poor man who's just had a pie thrown yeah, in his face. Right, right. Yeah, <laughs> You, you, you want to talk about humility. It's one thing to take the pie in the face and then have them say cut. It's another thing to have hundreds of people here watching after the fact. Let's hear it. There you go. It's hard without a mirror. Can I help him? Yes, of course you can. Come here. This is not beautiful. Come on. Right between your eyes and stuff, too. Oh. Yes. Let me be on your trousers. Trousers. There you go. Hello. Hi, Mom. Do we all have our own little section on the chair or something? No, you just need to there. Just, you're yeah. good. You're good there. You're excellent. Wait, are you all right? You're Sarah, excellent. Sarah, your mom, our, our mom, your perfume for Oh, thank you. <laughs> yeah, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, you're really cool. Thank you. Oh. We're, we're not going to call you Sarah Jessica Parr. We're just going to call you Sarah or SJP. Uh, wh whatever makes you feel comfortable, <laughs> Jedward. <laughs> oh, that's John. Uh, my, which one's John? That's the one with the pointy John. ear. That's what I thought. Yeah, and I, I got like crooked T, and he's, I got a scar, and he's got a scar. And he, we would do a bar name with John. So John, John, pa John you, Paul. You had a scar too. Oh, yeah, I have a scar on my lip. That's right. Did you forget? No, no, it's kind of weird. It's a bit smaller, and I like fell off a bike, and then I was fine. But then it was when I came up and I hit off the handle. Oh. It was so weird because one time I was walking around doing hair, and there's loads, of, there's loads of kind of stones in the ground, and I kind of flipped on yeah, the stones. Yeah, he's always the show. Hey, what's going on? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's all right. I think we're kind of jamming to ourselves. Okay, sorry. No joke. No talk. No talk. Okay, no, no, no. I stepped on the thing and it smacked me in the head, and then I was like, ow, and then, then I walked off a bit. <laughs> and then blood drips started dripping on my head. Okay, this is a bit kind of violent, okay? Yeah, no, it's too so violent. Let's just too violent. stop talking Scary. about it. Happy New Year. Yeah. yeah. So now, uh, this is uh, John, so nice. and, John and Edward, Jedward. Jed they look so nice. They're lovely. They're lovely boys. <laughs> what I love, what I love, because the two of you are so sweet, and you, you go in on the X Factor every week, you smiled, you did your big production numbers. And my God, and it, well, the thing is, look, they're boys with high hair who like jumping around, having a bit of a sing. And oh. was that your idea? I know, like, it was kind of weird because I remember John got a sh it's kind of, John, you take lots of skills to cut the top, but then you just get a shave to cut the sides, and then the top for, like really... eight euros, and then I just kept shaving. And we do, the sides. I would, we do lots of running, and then it makes you really aerodynamic trying to get through the wind. Like, you know, when you're, you know, say, like, you do loads of running, and your hair's blown everywhere, and you're like, well, that's oh, what everyone says about us, but like, we didn't intend on doing it. <laughs> I was really excited about you, John. It's like, ultimately, Joan Rivers. Sarah. 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 Is this freaking you out about going home to twins? Or you like, you'll go home and look at your children, you'll be like, twins. Twins. What, one seemed charming and a yeah. gift. Never let Matthew see the show. What if you, uh, Dr. Whovians, yeah. the Whovians in the yeah. house. Were you two, were you two Dr. Who fans? I mean, yeah. R, sorry. Yeah, no, it's still on. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to get the telly on, but it's, you know, it's an institution, isn't it? Yeah. From the days when we hid behind the sofa and were the Daleks like, were upstairs. When you were a kid, did you watch yeah, it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And did you, did you watch it as a no, kid? No, I, I, I was... What? <laughs> <laughs> I was Star Wars. Uh, they weren't I... mutually exclusive. <laughs> well, they were, because, because Doctor Who could happen. Star Wars was in a galaxy far, far away. <laughs> Two sons, where there's Doctor Who, you could you could get mugged going the bog. So <laughs> I, I, I never, you know what I mean? I didn't as a child. I got into the new series. Good, that's fine. Then. And I thought it was very <laughs> it was that thing going, can they bring this back? Well it work and it worked marvellously. It mean, did. It my... did. And officially, officially, the best Doctor Who ever. <laughs> wow. Now, no, no. Mm. Don't do my word for it. Oh no. <laughs> Doctor Who magazine says so. Yes. <laughs> and if they don't know. Yes. Is that, how often is that magazine out? Once a month. <laughs> Are you no. serious? How many features? <laughs> it's packed. Win. <laughs> I mean, seriously, this comes out 12 times a year. Yes. Why? <laughs> Why would they have to bring that out so times a year when people like him are hiding in your garden? <laughs> <laughs> Surely he knows everything there is to know about you already. We'll find that out later. But you have started going to the gym and yeah, you've got to well, beefing up for please, the shirts yeah, off. Yeah, sure. Rolls. I mean, it can only be a matter of time before Daniel Craig uh, 
gives over the James Bond role. <laughs> But yeah, I've been, start, I've, been, uh, I've been beefing up. Well, I'd say beefing up. I've been going to the gym trying to stay alive um, <laughs> over the age of, of 50. Um, I'm, I'm very uncomfortable in the gym, though, so I know I try not... You know what I mean? I'll get rid I mean, you seem like a man who's probably very comfortable with your body and happy to walk around. <laughs> Are you one of those guys who walks around in the gym completely naked? Because I'm more of a... Like, I, I prefer the towel on, smuggling the underpants down... <laughs> You know, the With the seaside, the yeah, seaside I, Well, yeah, but I apply that in the gym. I don't, no one's seeing what's going on down here. I just, I, like, I, I was in the gym and there was a guy and he was wandering around completely naked, weighing himself. <laughs> Pop a towel on! <laughs> How exact have these measurements got to be? <laughs> I'm going on the space shuttle. Oh, for <laughs> Was, and one guy came up to me and he was he started a conversation with me, completely naked, and he was and he just came along, I was on a bench to put my shoes on, he just came up like that. <laughs> <laughs> I don't like the sound you of that. Don't like the sound either. Either. No, you don't like the sound of that. You wouldn't want a man's no. genitals staring at that. No, I'd hate that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> because you did have to go all gym crazy. Was it the A team made you all, all gym yeah. crazy? Yeah, yeah, I did. But I, I'm a, you do this when you go to the gym. I do the two towel thing where you go into the shower, you have the towel, you wear the towel into the shower, then you have another towel in the shower. You wear it in the shower in the and then shower. it get wet? Yeah, no, then I put it over, then I have another towel. That's how crazy I get about it. Really? So you're as, you're as embarrassed of what's Very going embarrassed. as I am? Oh, wait a minute, do you mean you use one as a, one of those big turbans when you come out of the shower? <laughs> I should, that would be a good way to hide it. <laughs> That'd be a good look. Yeah. I go to the gym with my coat on. <laughs> <laughs> Don't take it off. And then a lot of the time people just try and bounce on me because they think I'm equipment. <laughs> 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 Next week, when my guests include. I've got it, just 45 minutes. Yeah. <laughs> what a weird show. They just don't like that. Do they? No, they, they hate don't it. Want you didn't get into the business that. for that. <laughs> <laughs> so, welcome all to the couch. Now, Sarah Sharona, isn't yeah. it? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but that's how you say it. Because yeah. people Sersha. do get it wrong a lot. Sarah, yeah, like Sersha. inertia. Inertia. It's the Sersha. best way to... I have to introduce myself that way now. Saoirse, like inertia. Because people don't have it, otherwise they butcher my name. But, no, in Ireland, people say it different ways, don't they? Like, isn't there a Saoirse? Yeah, I don't think I actually pronounce my name the correct way. I, I say Saoirse. But a lot of people in Ireland say, no, it's actually Saoirse. I think you're saying that wrong. So, I don't know. Um, <laughs> I'm going to say Saoirse. John, are you hearing the subtle difference between Saoirse and Saoirse? I, I am. <laughs> I'm just wondering what she says when they... Tell her she says her name wrong. <laughs> Actually, not the only unusual name on the couch, because Richard, on you, your middle name is unexpected, I would have thought. Something's going to happen now, I know. <laughs> no! Nothing bad happened. No, but your middle name's not, Tiffany. It's Tiffany, it is Tiffany. <laughs> What's so funny about that? <laughs> 
<laughs> it's not the today. Tiffany's, by the way. <laughs> no, but it comes through. This was um, it, my mother's side. That's her maiden name is Tiffany. And it came through Belgium somehow. Oh, okay. I'm guessing you kept that quiet in school, I imagine. <laughs> you want to know how ridiculous I am? I almost used it as my stage name. No. But you're Tiffany Dash Gear. <laughs> <laughs> so when you're in an ad, do you voice an opinion on the ad? Or do yes. you just do... Oh, you do? Always. Do they welcome that opinion? No. <laughs> <laughs> no, but I mean, I know better than they do. That is the truth. Yes. Absolutely. And I'm experienced, and I need to help them sometimes. Mm. The grammar is often bad. Um, <laughs> she really doesn't want to listen to my songs. <laughs> yes, I do. I do. We'll I get do. notes. We'll get notes later. Because <laughs> Miriam, you were the voice of a period, weren't you? A menstrual period. A menstrual yes. period. Yes. <laughs> Sorry, my mistake. <laughs> How did you find that voice? <laughs> well, <laughs> you always go to the text first. Yes. And the text was, uh, you didn't expect to find me on your holidays. <laughs> <laughs> so I thought, well, <laughs> that's got that to be a, a naughty schoolgirl. So <clears throat> I, I went, um... <laughs> You didn't expect to find me on your holidays, did you? <laughs> <laughs> Beautiful. What were you selling? Sanitary towel or something? It, it, was, um, it was for a sanitary protection. Yes, Lovely. for sanitary protection. Yeah. yeah. Sales went up, I imagine. Yes. Yeah. I, I have actually got a menstrual story for you, if you like. <laughs> <laughs> Off you go, well, Miriam Margulies. Did, did I tell you uh, last time about when I did an audition for Crossroads? No, I don't right. think so. Well, <laughs> for those of you who, who may remember, Crossroads was a, uh, I know. Um, I a soap opera yeah. uh, which took place in Birmingham, and I went for the, uh, for the audition. And um, I'm pouring this all over myself. It's rather exciting. And um, <laughs> as I was waiting for my turn to, to, do, to do the audition, my period started. And I thought... Period! <laughs> Don't you call it that? <laughs> Don't you call it that? <laughs> Don't, Don't you call it that? No, I just thought I'm what? on the rag. This is on the rag! Very in between. Yes. How are you doing, Dominic? I'm doing OK. Yeah. Doing OK. <laughs> all, all good there? Yeah. Yeah. yeah, OK. Really comfortable. OK, so... Be brave. You don't have to talk about period. No, I do. Be I don't brave. Mind period. It's all right. It's all right. Okay. So, so, meanwhile, back in Birmingham, Miriam yes. just had her period. So, I went, I went to the ladies' room, and in those days, there was a, a long box on the wall, Dr Southall sanitary towels, and you put in two, two pennies and pulled the little drawer and got out the carton. Am I right? You remember all this, some of you. And, um... People applauding. So, oh, yes! <laughs> I put in my 2P, pulled out the little drawer, and it snapped back with my finger in it. <laughs> so it was really painful. It tore a great gash in my finger, which was ex so sore, bleeding all over the place. I managed to pull open the drawer and extract my finger. I rushed into the loo and fixed myself up, came out again and went in and started to read for the audition. And... I noticed that the script was covered in blood and the people I was auditioning for noticed it too. And they looked at, and I, I saw them looking and I said, oh, I, I'm so sorry. You see my period started. <laughs> Yeah. I did, actually. You got the job! Yay! <laughs> <laughs> now, this is 31st studio album. Something like that. Yeah. Wow. And what's great is, listening to these songs, it's you and Bernie Taupin sort of at the top of your game. Well, I, it's the most piano oriented record I've ever made. And it's a very simple album. Um, and I don't really see the point of making a record if you don't try and make it better. Um, I've been making records since 1969. 
I made a lot of records, um, and this one is one of my favourites um, because I think we've come a step further. I'm singing better, I'm playing better. It's a very relaxed album, and so I'm very happy with it. And, you know, I'm sure Judy would say that she goes into every part hoping to make a better performance than the last one. There's no point in carrying on otherwise, um, just for the sake of it. I mean, they want to... Record company, who are here tonight? Assholes. Um... <laughs> They're a very good record, aren't they? But they, you know, it's been, no, no, it's been it suggested. It shows when you're a star, doesn't it? <laughs> you're a proper star, can call a record company an arsehole. Well, <laughs> they wanted me to make Christmas albums and, you know, cover albums, Motown records, but that is so silly, you know. Uh, I'll leave that to Rod Stewart and people like that. <laughs> Did I say that? Uh, yes, you Have you said that? His album's doing much better than mine. <laughs> Assholes! <laughs> Uh, the Ministry of Defence, this, and this is, uh, this is down to you, because obviously you have a particular fan base. The Ministry of Defence, <laughs> they've released the latest bunch of X-Files featuring uh, various sightings oh by members of the public. So they heard uh, you were on the show, uh, they were very keen to help, so... Uh, How did the Ministry of Defence <laughs> hear? What Can't department of the Ministry of Defence goes, you'll never guess who's on Norton? <laughs> no, we <laughs> Oh, you rang them. So we rang they, them. They, they didn't hear them. No, because they've got they've got the <laughs> they've volunteered no, this any, information. Anyone go, anyone go on the website and they've got the newly released UFO files. But uh, presumably they just wanted people to be aware of some of these people. Um, <laughs> uh, now some of this is very very frightening. I'll warn you now. Uh, now a Plymouth woman reported a sighting that occurred when she went downstairs in the night to refill the hot water bottles. <laughs> As you do. Do you, though? You fill them, you're warm, you go to sleep. You wake up, they're cold, but now you're warm in bed, you kick them out. You don't refill them. The problem is that hot water bottles just aren't as good as they were, Graham. I mean, they, you know... <laughs> Playing the moon landing, but it's, it's, they've, they've put all the research money into the wrong place. That's what's happened. Now, this poor woman in Plymouth is being pilloried by you because of the moon landing. Anyway. Thank God he's here. I know, the, the report said. <laughs> the report said she saw a brownie orange object over her house. <laughs> now, she also drew a picture. Are you ready? Here's the picture. <laughs> <laughs> you think, a brown object heading towards the house? That's just the kids from the estate throwing shit at her window. <laughs> it's the mad woman yeah. refilling the bottles. Yeah. So. <laughs> uh, does make you think when you look at this, why are these objects always seen by people who can't draw? <laughs> like, here's a UFO as spotted near uh, Breadsol Hilltop in Derby. <laughs> <laughs> That's just somebody's pants, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> but my favourite alien one is this one uh, sighted in uh, West London. <laughs> <laughs> half alien, half banana. <laughs> <laughs> but now, this is extraordinary. This is uh, a letter from these top secret files. Now, uh, where is it? Now, I can show you. That's the, the actual writing of, of the letter. But uh, this letter... Whoa, we don't have any names for these people, right? So, uh, Dear sirs, your first reaction to this letter will be one of full disbelief. However, let me assure you, <laughs> I am neither insane or a charlatan, as the facts will prove. <laughs> and if you've got to put that in the first line of a letter, <laughs> chances are you're insane and a charlatan. <laughs> there you go. Now, it starts off, well, it starts off mad, but sane enough. During World War II, as I'm sure you're aware, a crashed UFO was recovered by the military somewhere in this country. I should like to know the exact date and location of this event. Fair enough, OK? <laughs> you know, I don't know this stuff. Maybe a UFO landed that, you know, everybody knows about, but she, doesn't have to, she wants to know where it landed. Right? It is possible this was Pussy Lock Warren. Uh, <laughs> right, this, that's what we think, Pussy Lock Warren. Uh, the location of which, as yet unable to discover, there are several options. Uh, Wisman's Wood by West Dart Devon, between Garrow Point and Blackstone Point Devon. The Norfolk Coast or Wenlock Edge. In fact, the name Pussy Lock Warren could be quite wrong. It just came into my mind one morning from whence I know not. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. 
So it's like, you know, you're going to be a Tom Tom for a long time. <laughs> with just names you've made up. <laughs> I want to go to Pussy Luck Warren. <laughs> now, the thing is, why does she want to know? Well, here we know that. The crash vehicle contained two males from Spectra, a planet orbiting the star Zeta Tucane, and a female from one of the two inhabited planets in the Sirius system, Aragon, the planet of warrior women. You think, how does she know so much about it? <laughs> the female was me. <laughs> so I have a right to ask my question. I will now acquaint you with some of my story in brief. I am aware of Purple, a top rank in the military. Some years ago, our president, Astra, asked me to come to Earth with the, blah, 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 to check out what was going on. I was very familiar with Earth. <laughs> you live here! <laughs> but, in fairness, she does do quite a good drawing of all the people. Now, we don't know her name, obviously. This is a picture she, she, uh, she drew of herself. Well, Gillian, you, you didn't send this letter, did you? Because <laughs> this woman looks spookily like you, I think. And the person sitting next to me... ...is Rosamund Pike. <laughs> yeah. It's you! Yeah. Look at some the resemblance well, the drawing next to me. <laughs> yes, I'm sure. In, in my baby grow. Uh, <laughs> how long have you been married for? Oh, uh... The, uh... Yeah, exactly how long. <laughs> Please. <laughs> You're supposed to be the poster child for marriage. How long are you married? 20, oh. uh, uh, <laughs> uh, December 23rd, 1961. So we'll be 47 years in December. Whoa, well, that deserves a round of applause. Hey. It really does. Oh, yeah. He just keeps telling himself it's only a movie. <laughs> <laughs> now, she's my trophy wife. And Do you keep her on I, the shelf? Uh, no, I, uh, <laughs> she, she, she keeps me honest, seriously, and she's, she's always been more mature and brighter than me, and so I've, I've been smart enough to listen to her. How do you keep the romance going? Well, it's that, it, it just, you know, you get older, you know, you've changed, your idea of romance changes so a little bit. you don't bother, bit. that's what you're saying. No, no, we <laughs> bother. I'm delighted to say we bother, but... Uh, the ideal kind of uh, way to go into a marriage is that you'll promise that person that you will help them become themselves at all costs. So you will tell the, them the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth all the time. And most of the time, you'll be the only person that will. And there's another level to it as well. People talk about happiness and there's so, oh, I'm happy as Larry, or he makes me happy, she made this may, but they rarely talk about joy. And that's the thing that transcends the whole relationship, is the element of joy and, and realizing that with gratitude and praise, the other person has allowed you to experience joy. I, and that's I think different. I'm safe to say that's the most profound thing anyone's ever said on this show. <laughs> uh, <laughs> very impressive uh, basketball uh, work in it. Now, the thing about, about, in school, you were not good at basketball. No, no, I didn't play in high school, so I, I learned pretty much for High School Musical and also for this movie, that was about it. Do you do all the tricks in this movie? Because it's quite the good tricks. Yeah, yeah, it's, it's, it's little stuff. It's not very practical for in-game use, but I can spin the ball on my finger pretty well. Well, you know what's coming. Uh, <laughs> I, I do have a ball. So could you do it? Yeah, I like that. Like me, an actor prepares. I'll just take a sip of water. And, uh... so you can't have, can't have dry mouth when you're about to attempt no. basketball. Okay. There you go, sir. Is, is that just a terrible English basketball? <laughs> it's it's pretty bad. It's okay. Sorry. No, it's okay. <laughs> Just watch, Close. just watch what finger you use, because we're on TV, bro. <laughs> you can't what the finger up. you're using? <laughs> <laughs> but he's got a ball on top of it. Well, I can't do it! Do you humiliate me? Yes, I'm 37, my life is over. <laughs> oh, dear. Because would, I wouldn't like to go back to, to high school. Would you... 
Well, I suppose it's last week for you. <laughs> yeah, it wasn't that long ago. You yeah, know, I think I think the idea of going back to high school... Down. You don't have to hold it. I, it's, you know, it's kind of comfortable. Okay, if you want to hold it. Uh, I think the idea of going back is, is pretty intriguing to <laughs> a lot of people. Because, uh... Please, what? please, I'm agreeing with you. <laughs> okay, good, thank you. Can you not touch me, please? <laughs> The audience isn't normally like this. They're very excited. They're very excited. I love it. Uh, Thank you. Obviously, all oh, this is based on Jonathan Creek devising tricks and things. Mm -hmm. uh, you also have a, a, a party trick, I believe. Is it a, well, have you got a party trick? I'm not going too far to call it a party trick. Would you call it an impression? I can do an impression of a dog getting its paw caught in a car door. <laughs> see, you want to see that, don't you? <laughs> We've got to see that. Yeah. Can you can you do it just sitting there, or do you need? Yeah. You can. <laughs> yeah. That was quite a quite a small dog. But I used to do it when I was doing stand up. It's a <laughs> like this, and people go, oh, they go, there isn't a dog. It's me. <laughs> <laughs> I wanted to get a car on and shut a dog in the door. <laughs> <laughs> make those people go home. <laughs> and uh, if you had a party and want to impress people, uh, what would you do? I used to, I don't drink beer, but I used to be able to chug a can of beer. Now I haven't done it in 25 years, but uh, I used to be able to. All right. So uh, we just wonder if any in the audience uh, has any tricks. If anyone's any, uh, I mean, it doesn't need to be magic. It could be, it could be a, a, a noise or a face or it could be a, something, a clever thing you can do. So if you've got something you can do, stand up. Stand up and I'll, I'll come and ask you about it. Uh, uh, hello, Mrs. In here. Now, uh, what's your name? Uh, Christina. Christina? Yeah. Yes. And what can you do? Yeah, I can see the alphabet backwards. Mm, that's a bit shit. <laughs> Okay. Are people interested in Christina doing that? Yeah. Okay, well, stay standing then. Stay standing. What can you do now? I can levitate a tea towel. <gasps> that sounds good. <laughs> Could just be throwing it. <laughs> what, what was your name again? Trisha. Trisha, you, you, you stay standing. Stay standing, Trisha. Okay, sorry, sorry, sorry. Uh, <laughs> excuse me. So we've got uh, Alfred backwards. We've got uh, Trisha with a levitating tea towel. What can you do? I can catch a two pound coin from my elbow in my hand. A two pound coin? Yeah, from my elbow to my hand. That's almost the size of a frisbee. That's all. <laughs> what's your name? Barry. Barry, should we let him do that? Yeah. Yeah, there we go. Yes! I'm sorry, a tea towel. <laughs> I need someone to make me look good. Yeah, go on. Uh, okay, very good. That was Barry and a two pound coin. Uh, now, a few ladies over here. Uh, what can you do, lady? Uh, I can uh, disappear a pen. Disappear a pen? Yeah. <laughs> It's probably rubbish, but I like that you called it disappearing a pen. <laughs> yes. I will now disappear this pen. <laughs> what was your name? Koo. Koo, okay. Uh, so how many people is that now? A set. Oh, all right, I'll ask the fucker what he does. This better be good. If, if this isn't water into wine, <laughs> I'm disappointed. I can crack my nose. You can crack your can nose. Crack my nose. <laughs> What is that? Yeah, we'll let you. What was your name? Logan. Logan. Okay, Logan's nosy crack. All right, uh, all of you people, uh, we're going to see you later. So if you go up the stairs, go up the stairs, people will find you and we'll, we'll see you later to do your tricks. Okay. Yes, Logan, leave your jacket there. Off you go. Live from Las Vegas, it's the greatest show on earth for one night only at the world famous Norton's Palace. We present the most spectacular magic acts in the universe, featuring Christina. She's not backwards and coming forwards with her alphabet trick. Z Y X W V U T S N R Q P O N M L K J I H G F E D C B A. From Chicago, the amazing Trisha and her levitating tea towel. Disappear a pen. <laughs> oh! Stupid! Oh, no! 
with Big Bad Barry. Sophisticated dress, sophisticated dress. <laughs> Geography teacher. Yeah. <laughs> uh, now, uh, Maggie, you are you're here working at the moment. Yeah, just about to start working. Oh, so you haven't started yet? Well, we're rehearsing, picking costumes and things like that. Okay. So I'm right, it is about the person who invented the vibrator. Yes, the person who inadvertently invented the vibrator. Wow, that's a story already. Yeah. You sound like you're in great pain. Mm. Yeah, so in the turn of the last century, uh, you know, they, there was this whole thing about hysteria, about, you know, any ailment that a woman had, they'd say they were hysterical. And one of the ways to make them feel better was to um, get them off. So they're, what do you call it here? I don't That'll know. do. Rub yeah. one <laughs> The show has only just begun. <laughs> so, uh... You know, there'd be these doctor's offices where you could go in and, um, and, they, and have I'd an orgasm. <laughs> the NHS is very different now, isn't it? <laughs> now, and in the film, are you playing American or English? I'm English. English? And you've done it before. You've been Nanny McPhee, you did the English accent yes, as I well. Yes, I did. And uh, do you feel confident with the English accent? Um, I think most American people would kind of secretly like to be able to talk English now and then, so I... You know, I, I, feel, I feel pretty good about it, and I, I quite like it. Because have you wandered in your accents into the regions? Mm -hmm. No, but I've been hearing you two wander into the regions, don't yeah. you? She hasn't wandered anywhere. Yeah. She's like... <laughs> <laughs> Stuck. Can I hear well? OK, so if you said something like, um... Ooh, that's a beautiful boy. Oh, it's a beautiful boy. See, that's... Yeah. 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 That's something of, whoa, Indian. Yeah. <laughs> so can, you, can, can you do it? Come here. That's a much easier word to learn. And yeah. how about you? What's yours? I'm uh, from Bristol, so uh, you... Uh, uh, <laughs> very shy, the Bristolian people. Um, so you've, um, I guess, all right, my lover? All right, my lover? Yeah. Um, Gert Lush is another thing. If something's Gert really... Lush. If something's amazing, you'd say, oh, that's a Gert Lush sandwich. Oh, it's a Gert Lush sandwich. There you go. Somebody from the West Country once told me that they call wood lice grand for creatures. Do they? Yeah. I think they might have been mocking you, Sean. Maybe. No. <laughs> <laughs> and w while you're here, are you able to kind of walk around and not be bothered? Yeah. Yeah. Nobody's that interested in me here. <laughs> no, it's, it's fine. Show her some love. <laughs> Mob her. Mob her. Mob her. If anyone's got some time over the next few days, stalk her a little. <laughs> She'd appreciate it. Because John down the end, He's written... You've written it. Have you finished the book? He's written a book, a kind of a, yeah. a relationships guide. Uh, yeah, if you intend never to be in a relationship again. <laughs> it's a relationship guide in that sense. Oh. What, what, what does that mean? Do you mean that the relationship you're having will last the rest of your life, or you'll never... You... It means you will never be attractive to another human being. <laughs> oh, ever. That. In that sort of sense, yeah. So it's a kind of how-not-to guide. It's, it's my personal... I have a very cynical view of relationships that, uh, Oh, yeah. Oh, that's nice, oh. Isn't it? oh. Are you... Did you just go, oh? 
I love a girl with no fur. I... <laughs> are you two together? Are you in a relationship? <laughs> Didn't they all have differently? To, no, no, but to the lady, the la he went, yes, and she went, she went yes. <laughs> I would say this to pierce any sympathy you might have for me. Your relationship will end, and the more you love each other now, the more devastated you'll be when it ends. <laughs> is, is, is that... <laughs> have a nice weekend! <laughs> it was in this movie, you had the tooth knocked out this time. Oh, yes, I, I had a concussion, whiplash, Stitches in my hand, dislocated shoulder. Yeah, there's been a lot of breaks and sprains and concussions. I think the most psychologically damaging was when I broke my penis a few years ago. <laughs> I, was, I was trying to backflip a motorcycle, and I can't ride a motorcycle. And I came off the ramp, I let go of the bike, it goes 20 feet in the air, and comes down and breaks its handlebars off in my crotch. <laughs> so, yeah. Uh, you know, straight to the hospital and surgery. But that was like th over three years ago, and I still have to catheter twice a day. Like a 15-inch tube about the size of a number two pencil twice a day. Wait yeah. a second. A 15-inch tube? Lucky wife. <laughs> <laughs> I gotta be honest. A, a two-inch tube would probably get the job done. So, <laughs> so it still hasn't healed. Not completely, but I have a 10-month-old son, so it still works. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Phew. Yeah, thank you. Thank you for calling my penis. <laughs> well, listen, uh, that's, uh, I'd say the mashed-up penis is a very impressive injury. <laughs> We've got 600 people in our audience tonight. So uh, let's see. Let's see if we can do better than that. Uh, we'll see who's hurt what. Uh, to hurt feelings right there. Uh, but, uh... <laughs> <laughs> Have you heard anything? Have you broken anything? No. No, <laughs> never? Horse riding, anything? <laughs> no, 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 no. Bungee no. gone wrong? <laughs> nothing, nothing, <laughs> nothing? Absolutely nothing. Nothing, nothing at all? <laughs> Can't help you, Johnny. <laughs> uh, uh, anyway, right oh, you look, you broke something. <laughs> Lady up here's broken something. <laughs> <laughs> what were you up to? I broke my nose. I walked into a tree. Into a what? Tree. She walked into a tree. I'm sensing drink was involved. <laughs> was it a drink thing? Actually, it was um, my first week in high school. I was on school camp. It was um, an introduction to our new peers and new life at high school. I was blindfolded and it was a trust game. <laughs> um... I like the people you went to school with. That's a really funny game. Trust me. Boof. <laughs> Anyone else? Anyone any broken anything? Oh, you? Yes, I have you? an injury. I got a rubber stuck up my nose. An eraser. I heard yeah. something else. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> that that would have been a really good injury. <laughs> How that happened bit of the story would have been <laughs> really good. <laughs> it was his first time. <laughs> <laughs> did you do it yourself or did someone else shove it up? My there? brother dared me to put a pencil up my nose and it, you know the, the yellow ones with the pink yes, rubbers? Yes, I do, yes. It came do you know them? Yes. <laughs> yes. Yes. And he told me I couldn't take it out because it would erase my memories. <laughs> Six. Oh, but, but no permanent damage. It depends on what you call permanent damage. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, well done, all the injured people. Yeah. Very good. Excellent. Is it true that one of the things that attracted you to Ozzy was that he doesn't lie? No, he does. He can't lie. And it's like we'd be at business meetings, and I would, you know, mm. lie, lie. <laughs> <laughs> I just embellish things, make them sound better than they actually yes. are. And he'd be, "Why are you saying that?" And then I'd be kicking him under the table. Stop kicking me under the table! <laughs> <laughs> and I've got my heel in his foot. What's the matter with you? And I'm like, oh. For... <laughs> but you've lied to him, haven't you? Oh, loads. God. <laughs> yes. Yes. Yeah. What was the thing about you rode a motorbike? 
oh god that was when we were first together and I, I wanted to be kind of like hip and happening and I I told him that I had a Harley Davidson and like I would ride it on a Sunday down to Malibu you know Mind you were good at that with them dogs in Patagonia with Jack oh sh <laughs> what <laughs> When we went to Patagonia with Jack just a couple of months ago, she got, I thought she was going to be wrapped around the tree with his dog sled. She went straight to carry on and she'd done it all her life. I'll translate. <laughs> well, God, you have an effect. What the fuck do you I do know what you're talking about. Okay. Yeah, because no, because you were in Adrenaline Junkies with Jack and yes. you went to Patagonia. So yes. you understand me, you understand. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> What's the matter with you? <laughs> <laughs> Back to you, sir, because uh, you, you have diversified in your life into all these different areas, yeah. into the kind of the film, into business, thing. and is that because, realistically, it's kind of harder to make money out of music now? Yeah, it is, but, I mean, just my personal interest in the storytelling process, I've been writing songs and they're like three minutes long, so you can only create descriptions. The film projects allow me to develop cause and effect and, you know, identify with, to be able to make it visible the person's defects, you know? And where do you stand on this thing, you know, because people talk about how um, all TV, you know, with uh, American Idol and X Factor, I've yeah. now got a stranglehold on music that, like, it, number one every week seems to have something to do with I mean, because of the viewership. The viewership is so high. I just did the X Factor. I had to go on there with them. Surely you've done enough. I was like, no, nah, I'm going to perform on it. <laughs> Do it. Everybody Did you get any watch? votes? They, I'm not sure if they voted, but they saw me. <laughs> <laughs> did you meet the X Factorines? Yeah. Oh, right. So, did you see them perform? I did. I did. Was it Marco, y Yovana, and, and another, another group? That's Yovana, the cheeky girls. <laughs> Factor in Italy, someone that just stole me in my ear. Yeah, that's yeah. why they're called Marco and Giovanni and things. <laughs> Did you see how politely though we handled that? Because we thought we, you would have lost your mind. Yeah. <laughs> and we went, oh, that's okay. We okay. said, oh, it's cool. Oh, Game yeah. of drink and wine. Oh, Marco. Marco. Oh, yeah. Yeah. He's my favourite. Yeah. Yeah. You got him this look like, don't worry, he's been shot. Thanks for that. Has arrived in Europe. <laughs> I'm in Europe. I did one here, you know, Italy. <laughs> yeah. It's a suburb of London. <laughs> you own parrots? Yes. You, no, I, I, I do. Yes. How, um, many, how many do you have? I've got two, uh, two parrots um, and uh, a, a Moluccan cockatoo and a Triton cockatoo there. And they're, you like a cockatoo, don't you? Yes. <laughs> I'm sorry. It's it's even I. <laughs> <laughs> there was, we were walking down the corridor, and there was a door marked innuendo. And I thought, Shall I open it? No, I shan't. <laughs> oh, <sorry. Perhaps>. <laughs> <laughs> hey, <laughs> was there? there was a you were just, you're just dotting the I's and crossing the T's. <laughs> you're Moluccan. Um, the I can't say the word now. No. The parrots. No. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> There's a known, yeah, mm -hmm. and uh, they were, yeah, rescue birds that we got from a, a rescue centre. We, we, we know, we only take on birds that, are, that for, for whom they've already had several owners. And do you exercise your birds? Yes, we do. We, well, in the wild, parrots, um, particularly cockatoos, will forage on the forest floor rather than sort of fly about. And so they love to run and forage in the, in the ground. So we would take them to Richmond Park and put them on harnesses and just walk them around. <laughs> <laughs> To kill your parrots, the, the, uh, the size of their beaks, right? Oh, These right. dogs, there's some sort of evolutionary sort of light bulb going off somewhere. <laughs> go, yeah, yeah, maybe not. <laughs> I've seen the footage of Stephen, and uh, that bird's going to get on my head and <laughs> try and get the wax out my ear and get off its face. <laughs>